Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! This episode is brought to you by Skysilk. If you're looking for a free Linux-based VPS in the cloud, go to skysilk.com. No strings attached. Just awesome stuff. How to install PHP on our NGNX server. As usual, let's SSH into our server with our Ubuntu user that we previously created. First thing first, as always, let's check for outstanding updates with the sudo apt update command. And it looks like we have some, so let's run the sudo apt upgrade command to install them. Perfect! Now let's install PHP because by default doesn't come pre-installed with nginx server. Let's type sudo apt-get install php-fpm which stands for fast CGI process manager and the php-mysql extension in order to later allow us to let PHP and our database communicate properly. Automatically this command will install other necessary packages like the command line tool and other extensions. Also, by not specifying any PHP version to our install command, the latest stable available release in our Ubuntu repository will be automatically pulled. In my case I'm running PHP 7.1. After the installation is completed, let's check if our VPS recognizes it by typing php space dash v. The currently available version installed in our system should be properly listed. You can also type the command which php to see in which folder the CLI tool was installed. Now it's time to configure php to make it more secure by editing the .ini or ini file, which controls the global settings of our installed component. Let's type sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash php forward slash your version of php in my case is 7.1 forward slash fpm forward slash php dot ini. You can always hit tab on your keyboard to use the bash autocomplete suggestions and see which files are available in your directories. Let's hit Ctrl and W on your keyboard to search for the cgi.fix underscore path info option. We need to uncomment this option by removing the semicolon at the beginning and then setting it to 0 instead of 1. This is an extremely insecure settings because it tells PHP to attempt to execute the closest file it can find if the requested PHP file cannot be found. This basically will allow the user to craft PHP requests in a way that would allow them to execute scripts that we don't want it, that they shouldn't be allowed to execute. Let's save the file with the control plus O keystroke and then the control plus X to exit. In order to make these changes persist, we need to restart the PHP manager. So let's type sudo systemctl restart PHP 7.1 or your version of PHP dash fpm. Now let's do a little experiment. If we try to access our VPS by typing its IP address in the browser, we should see the usual default welcome screen of nginx. Let's add an index.php file to the base server directory and see if the browser can handle it properly. Let's go back a couple of directories to access the root directory by typing cd space dot dot twice or altogether cd space dot dot forward slash dot dot. You can type ls to list all the available files and folders in that directory. Let's type cd space var forward slash www forward slash html and list the file in it with the ls command. You will see we have an index.nginx-debian.html and that's the index file we're seeing when we access our server from the browser. Let's create a PHP file by typing sudo touch index.php and then edit this file by typing sudo nano index.php. In this file, like you probably saw in a million different tutorials, let's open the PHP tags and type PHP info open and close the regular brackets and then semicolon. 
And because this is uh, just a simple PHP file with no HTML expected, let's not close the PHP tags to avoid issues with blank spaces. If we save the file and we close it, now we should be able to visualize it in our browser. First, let's remove the default HTML file by typing sudo rm and the name of the file. Be extremely careful with the rm, that stands for remove, command, when you run it with sudo, because you could easily accidentally delete important system files. Now, if we refresh our browser, boom, huge mistake. Nothing shows up and our nginx server cannot return the index.php file, and even if we try to point directly to it by typing it in the URL bar, the file won't be loaded in the browser but downloaded instead. This is no good. This is happening because we didn't update the nginx server block and told it how to handle PHP files, so let's fix this. Let's edit the default block of nginx by typing sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash nginx forward slash sites dash available forward slash default. Let's scroll down until we enter the server configuration area and let's uncomment a bunch of things. First, let's identify where the index files are getting handled and let's list the index.php right after the first index declaration as one of them. And we can also remove the nginx dash debian.html file because we deleted that one. Then we can specify our IP address as a server name option, just to have a defined value and not require nginx to figure it out every time. We will then update this value once we set up a proper domain name. After that, let's scroll a little bit further down and let's uncomment the PHP settings to allow nginx to use our fast CGI manager. We're not using the PHP-CGI package, so we don't need to uncomment that line. Remember to update the version of PHP that matches the one you actually installed. And as the last action, let's uncomment the location block dealing with the .htaccess files to let nginx know that we don't want to deal with these type of files or present them to the user. Let's save the file and close it. Before doing anything else, let's test if our settings are correct and we didn't make any typo by typing sudo nginx dash T. This command will test our config file and give us a warning if any error were found. Looks like we're good to go. Let's reload nginx with the proper command to make our server aware of these changes. Now we can go back in our browser and refresh our server IP address and finally we should be able to take a look at the output of our PHP info command. This will confirm that our PHP package is working and properly hooked up to our nginx server. Well, that's pretty much it for this lesson. Thanks for watching and I talk to you in the next one.